Welcome to our celebration of the International Day of Family Remittances. Every 16th of June, we gather to recognize over 200 million migrant workers worldwide, half of them women. Their contributions improve the lives of over 800 million family members and communities back home. These family remittances involve over 1 billion people that are now considered to be the human face of globalization. Let me acknowledge the commitment and support from member states, international organizations, private sector, and civil society stakeholders towards making remittances safer, faster, cheaper, maximizing development opportunities for millions of remittance families around the world. The last UN General Assembly made a global call to rescue the Sustainable Development Goals and get back on track to building a better world that leaves no one behind. And certainly, migrant workers don't leave their families behind. Everyone has a unique story, but the majority shares a common goal, to provide reliable financial support for their loved ones back home. This money sent home gives families a chance to stay in their communities, address their daily needs, and have opportunities for a better future. Past and recent crises have shown us that individual $200 sent back home every month are nothing short of a lifeline. Remittances can make the difference between remaining poor or getting out of poverty. They ensure improved nutrition, health, housing, sanitation, and most importantly, support education and a better future for new generations. But their impact can be even greater. When coupled with digital and financial services, such as savings, credit, and insurance, remittances become an extraordinary instrument of resilience for millions, particularly in rural areas. They also help develop the entrepreneurial spirit or enable recipient families to increase their assets. In other words, it is fair to say that remittances are a key contributor to achieving almost all of the SDGs. In 2022, 626 billion with B in dollars in remittances reached low and middle income countries half of them to rural areas where they count the most. These flows surpass by far official development assistance. The development challenge from now until 2030 is to maximize the multiplier effect to approximately $5 trillion with T in remittances expected to be transferred. Stronger partnerships between governments, the private sector and civil society are crucial to make remittances count even more. Through these partnerships, we will engage 1 billion people towards our common goal of rescuing the SDGs by 2030. At IFAD, we remain convinced that we can do this, one family at a time. Thank you. And with this, I would like to open the official observance ceremony and I would like to invite to the stage Donald Brown, Associate Vice President, Program Management Department of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, Cristina Duarte, United Nations Secretary General Special Advocate for Africa, the Government of the Republic of the Philippines, Her Excellency Marie Charlotte Tang, Philippine Ambassador to Kenya and Permanent Representative to UNEP and UN Habitat, and Mr. Stephen Odua, State Department for Investment Promotion. Can we ask you to come to the stage? everybody, uh, excellencies, distinguished representatives, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. So I'm very pleased today to welcome you all to this important event observing the International uh, Day of Family Remittances. 
After five years without an in-presence forum, we are finally being able to celebrate this day in person within a new edition of the Global Forum on Remittances, Investment and Development. Five years ago in 2018, the UN General Assembly unanimously endorsed the resolution creating the International Day of Family Remittances. But maybe not all of you know that this day was first proclaimed at an IFAD Governing Council in 2014 and then brought to the General Assembly with the coalition of champion countries, many of whom are represented today. Since the endorsement of the IDFR, recognizing the contribution of over 200 million migrants to the well-being of 800 million family members and their respective communities, remittances have been acknowledged as the human face of globalization. In line with the last UN General Assembly Global Call to rescue the Sustainable Development Goals and get back on track to building a better world that leaves no one behind, and given your presence here this June 16th, 2023, I would like to invite you all to confirm a collective commitment to foster the developmental impact of family remittances. The second part of the morning today will be dedicated to further unleashing the role of migrants and diasporas in the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. As IFAD's president reminded us during the opening of this event, migrant workers don't leave their families behind. They leave home in order to give their families the chance of a better life and to remain in their hometowns and their communities. And certainly, evidence shows that families and entire communities and local economies are kept thriving due to the positive impact of remittances. In 2022, the total remittances to low and middle income countries reached 647 billion US dollars. But again, it is not only about the money, it is about the migrants and their driven dedication to make life better for those that stay at home. In the background, there is a universe of contributors that make the contributions of remittances possible. I am specifically referring to private sector companies, including money transfer operators, aggregators, mobile network operators, fintech, regtechs, financial institutions, including SACOs and microfinance banks and agents in rural areas, just to name a few. And on the side of the public sector, regulators and policymakers who enable the ecosystem. The International Day is a small token of our respect for the remittance family's efforts and an invaluable opportunity for all of us to express a commitment to action. Along with them, this day also recognizes the daily jobs of data experts in statistical departments, central bank officers, the private sector, from the CEO to the cashier in the furthest village and diaspora members. IFAD has been host of the IDFR celebration and observance and the promoter of IDFR global awareness raising campaign this year's IDFR campaign is focused on digital remittances towards financial inclusion and cost reduction. So we draw your attention to digitalization and the use of mobile technologies for the international remittances that have significantly increased during the pandemic, but represent less than 3.5% of total flows, 3.5%. With the help of mobile wallets and online platforms, remittances can be sent and received instantly, securely, even in remote areas. And mobile money remains the cheapest transfer method at 3.73%, thus confirming the real possibility to reach the 3% SDG 10 cents related to remittances by 2030 through innovative, inclusive and far-reaching transfer methods. Today, we take this opportunity to call upon government, private sector, and all stakeholders to take concrete action, hopefully through partnerships towards the commitments on remittances that are ongoing priority at local, national, and international level. 
In conclusion, and while taking this opportunity to invite everyone to join us today in celebrating the International Day of Family Remittances, it is my honour to welcome key distinguished guests this morning who are with us to celebrate this auspicious day. Christina Duarte, United Nations Secretary uh, General and Special Advisor for Africa. Stephen Adua, State Department for International Investment, as well as Maria Charlotte Tang, the Philippines Ambassador to Kenya. So with that, I would like to invite Christina up to uh, say a few words. Good morning. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, let me take the opportunity uh, that you are celebrating the International Day of Families Remittance and underscore the importance of our Global Remittance Forum to policy making in Africa. I could not miss uh, this opportunity. And the G20 declaration that has been issued today to celebrate the International Day of Family Remittances is very clear on this. If we, I'm sure you, you read the G20 declaration. And I read it five minutes ago. And it is a clear call to policymakers. A clear. It could not be more clear than that. And basically, allow me very quickly, the G20 declaration mentions five opportunities. And these five opportunities land on policymakers' responsibilities. First, addressing policy and regulatory issues to us. Second, reducing and greater access to these flows. Third, leveraging digital technology. We need to create conducive environments. Third, interoperable digital payment systems to us. Fifth, bundling remittance with financial and digital services. So this is a clear call to, uh, to policymakers. So from a policymaking standpoint, and I would like to take the opportunity that you are here to celebrate the International Day of Families Remittance, to ask, from a policymaking standpoint, what is the main challenge? And in my view, is to leverage remittances as a financial inclusion policy tool. This is our challenge, which means to use remittance to break a vicious cycle of vulnerability of family recipients. And from a macro policy standpoint, allow me to take again this opportunity to tell you from where I'm coming. You remember that in the first day, I mentioned the financial paradox in Africa, rich in financial resources, but begging for money, begging for ODA, begging for debt reliefs and debt suspensions. And of course, in a debt stress situation. And everybody knows that the global narrative is saying that Africa is in a debt stress situation because Africa has taken too much debt. Not true, it's false. Debt average is only 65%. For a continent that has everything to build, from A to Z, we have everything. Any physical infrastructure, you name it. Any institutional infrastructure, you name it, we need to build. 65% of debt to GDP stock is very low. So what is the problem? Or oh, where? is the problem. And then we go to the need of building country systems, strong country systems, to put Africa, African countries, in a situation to control economic flows. Because the debt stress situation in Africa is not because the ratio, the stock is high. 
is because Africa does not control the flows to serve the debt. And this is a huge difference. So, if we are talking about flows from a macroeconomic standpoint, if you are talking about controlling flows from a macroeconomic standpoint, we need to talk about remittances flows. So, and the question is, from a policy-making standpoint, what does that mean in terms of better control this, let's say, this financial flow? Because this financial flow is consistent, is resilient, is predictable, and, of course, is a great tool for policymakers to use it to change the risk profile of receivers of remittances. If you use the, the nature, the features of remittance flows to change the risk profile of the receivers, which means transforming them in trustable borrowers and making or eliminating the risk premium of those families, uh, uh, of those families that usually they pay when they ask for a loan, meaning that I'm creating an expansion and transitory for those families. If I'm doing that, meaning that I'm transforming those families in job creation mechanisms. And they are helping me as a policymaker. So, this is a win-win. And I would like to quote Pedro, you told me yesterday, help me so I can help you. And this is what I would like to stress here. So, the formalization of remittance flows, at the end of the day, will help change the risk profile of the family receivers, and by doing that, putting these same families in an expansionary trajectory to break the vicious cycle and becoming a huge economic multiplier, helping policymakers in Africa generate jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christina. And with that, I'd like to invite up Marie Charlotte Tang, the Philippines uh, ambassador to Kenya and the permanent representative to UNEP and UN Habitat, please. Uh, Excellency uh, Donald Brown, uh, Associate Vice President of uh, IFAD, uh, Madam Christina Duarte, Excellency uh, Special Advisor of the UN Secretary General for Africa. Uh, Director Stephen Odua, State Department for Investment Promotion of the Kenyan Ministry of Investments, Trade and Industry. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as I African say, all protocols observed. Uh, good morning. It is my pleasure to join you today uh, in person to commemorate this year's International Day of Family Remittances with a strong call for digital remittances towards financial inclusion and cost reduction the theme of the IDFR 2023 to 2024 campaign. I thank our dear friends in this endeavor, the IFAD, the Global Forum for Remittances Investment and Development Network, IDFR champions, and our other valuable partners. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in 2018, the Philippines, along with Guatemala, Madagascar, Algeria, led the adoption by the UN General Assembly of the landmark resolution declaring June 16th as the International Day of Family Remittances. The resolution strong recognizes the strong link between remittances and sustainable development. Interestingly, the resolution was adopted on June 12, our Independence Day. This is a fitting tribute to the hard work and sacrifices of all overseas Filipino workers who send remittances to improve the lives of their families and create a better and more resilient future for their children back home. For our event today, I just wish to highlight some of the Philippine learnings. First, uh, migration is a powerful driver of sustainable development as it is uh, closely interrelated to the 17 SDGs. Migration can be an effective poverty reduction tool for migrants and their families. 
Resources from it uh, promote access to education, improve health and housing situations, and empower women. Migration can make significant contributions to development efforts in both countries of origin and destination, as migrants bring significant benefits in the form of skills, investments, competitiveness, and cultural diversity. Second, the mobilization of diaspora resources to support families and communities back home remains uh, critically important. Last year, cash remittances coursed through banks uh, uh, from our overseas Filipino workers amounted to 32.5 billion. These are remittances coursed through banks. It's higher when it's coursed through other channels. This accounted for 8% of Philippine GDP. This is expected to grow 3% this year and next. This has multiplier effects. Diaspora resources fund household private consumption expenditures, help fuel demand for goods and services, thus supporting production activities and job creation in the home country. Remittances deposited to local banks also provide additional loanable funds for productive investment and investment endeavors. Third, as proven during the pandemic, digitalization promotes faster and more affordable remittance transfers and is a strong enabler of financial inclusion. Financial innovation such as e-money increase the efficiency and reduce the cost of cross-border remittance transactions. For instance, local e-money issuers and foreign digital wallet providers can partner to facilitate cross-border remittance powered by blockchain technology. This can provide a more convenient way for migrants to send money home than physically queuing up at remittance centers. In the Philippines, a, a very good example of a digital mechanism specially designed for migrants and their families is the creation of the Overseas Filipino Bank. This is the first digital bank in the Philippines to cater to, to the financial needs and requirements of overseas Filipinos and deliver quality and efficient remittance services. With the platform, overseas Filipinos are given a, an option to have a more convenient way to bank, invest, and access credit assistance. Of course, there's, also, there's always the question of bridging the digital divide to promote financial inclusion. What if you don't have uh, access to data or, or these things? Thus, efforts are, are being developed to, enabling, to develop the enabling infrastructure and supporting mechanisms to address the digital divide and build inclusive digital finance ecosystems, including the digital identification system. Promoting public awareness would also ensure the sustainable financial inclusivity effectively, uh, that in financial inclusivity effectively reaches the grassroots level. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines has benefited from more than five decades of its people working abroad to provide for their families, uh, with, to provide their families with a better future. Migration has strengthened the competitiveness of our labor force and remittances have fueled our economy and promoted our country's development. However, our government is also fully cognizant that migration for work is a temporary option and that our migrant workers should be fully reintegrated upon their return home to become empowered members of our domestic economy. Thus, the Philippine government is fully committed to continually refining its four-pronged migration strategy of regulation, protection, reintegration, and support to families. Aside from developing policies to facilitate remittances and financial inclusion, our government and partners also provide trainings and capacity building to Filipinos on how to best harness and translate their remittances to become sustainable sources of income through entrepreneurship and sound investments. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines remains uh, committed to share its best practices from its migration and remittance experience. It looks forward to continuing to work with the international community uh, in uplifting the welfare of migrants and channeling the fruits of their la labor uh, for a better, prosperous, and more sustainable future. So a happy International Day of Family Remittances to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marie-Charlotte. So I would like to now invite Stephen Odua up from the State Department for Investment Promotion. Thank you, Stephen. Your Excellency Marie Chatulutang, Philippine Ambassador to Kenya 
and permanent representative to the UNEP and UN Habitat. Honorable Christina Duarte, United Nations Secretary General, Special Advisor for Africa. Donald Brown, Associate Vice President, Program Management Department of IFAD. Governors of the Central Bank of Kenya and Gambia here in present. Distinguished delegates, all protocols observed. Good morning. Let me start by extending uh, greetings from uh, the Principal Secretary, Abubakar Hassan Abubakar, of the State Department of Investment Promotion in the Ministry of Investments, Trade, and Industry, of whom I also represent today, and also uh, give greetings from the Government of the Republic of Kenya. Today marks a major milestone since the adoption of the UN General Assembly on 12th June 2018 of the International Day of Family Remittances. This year's celebration comes at a turning point for most countries as we now are fully entering the post-COVID-19 era through, in most cases, removal of lockdowns. This year's theme, based on the backdrop of the International Day of Family Remittances 2023-2024 campaign that focuses on promoting digital technologies to enhance financial inclusion in lower, middle, and income countries and to work towards achieving the cost reduction of target, three, target of 3% as mentioned in the SDG 10C, as already mentioned by Donald earlier on, is also a timely and relevant in the emerging global changes. Today also provides us with an opportunity to reflect on the achievements of the Sustainable Development Goals and further the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. We therefore join the international community to recognize the contribution of the over 200 million migrants that continue to improve the lives of their 800 million family members back home and to create a future of hope for their children. Remittances represent a lifeline for millions around the world. In 2022, migrants ab abroad sent over US dollar 600 million in remittances, like you've already heard by earlier speakers, to their families back home. And Africa, in turn, received over US dollars 100 billion in remittances last year, an increase of over 12.1% since the year 2020. 17 African countries, representing about 30%, 31% of the continent out of the 54, are highly dependent on remittances, which on average contribute about 4% of their GDP. However, Africa remains the most expensive region in the world to send remittances to, with an average price of 8.85% uh, to send US dollar 200, that is as per figures of quarter four 2022, from 11.55% in quarter two of 2014. A slight reduction, but still high. It is thus imperative to recognize the positive impact of digital remittances, not only on reducing transfer costs, but also on enabling financial and digital inclusion amongst the most vulnerable groups of senders and recipients. In recent years, the digitalization of remittances has uh, been instrumental in addressing these barriers, uh, whether through online challenges, mobile channels, or a combination of both. Beyond the reduction of costs, remittance digitalization bolsters linkages with other digital financial services building longer-term financial resilience for remittance users. Now, looking at the importance of remittances, I note with appreciation that this year's Global Forum on Remittances, Investments, and the Development Summit 2023, Africa, of whom we are coming to uh, 
close today, has discussed for the last two days, among other things, the remittances journey from the first to the last mile. Remittances provide a lifeline for vulnerable and low-income households. They are a vital source of income for millions of individuals and families across the world, allowing them to fight SDG goal number one, that is fight poverty, hunger, SDG goal number two, promoting good health as envisaged in the SDG goal number six, decent work and economic growth, SDG goal number eight, and reducing inequalities, SDG goal number 10, or in other words, address their own SDGs. Steady flows of remittances also promote the financial inclusion of households. Therefore, remittances uh, can be leveraged to positively impact local communities through savings, investments, and job creation. Now, looking at uh, remittances into Kenya, uh, Kenya is the third largest recipient of remittances in sub-Saharan Africa uh, in absolute terms that's following uh, Nigeria and Ghana. Remittances to Kenya have increased tenfold in the last 15 years, reaching an all-time record of over US dollar 4 billion in 2022. Remittances account for nearly 3.4% of Kenya's gross domestic product and are a leading source of foreign exchange in the country. At 6.2% of send amount, the average cost of sending remittances to Kenya is above the SDG uh, goal 10C target of 3%, but lower than the average cost of Sub-Saharan Africa, which is at 6.7%, according to the World Bank Remittances Prize Worldwide of 2022. Since 2009, Kenya contributed significantly to the meetings that led to the adoption of this day we celebrate today, the United Nations International Day of Family Remittances uh, in 2018. Kenya is also a champion of the UN Global Compact for Safe, Orderly, and Regular Migration, adopted in 2018. Objective 19 of the GCM focuses on creating conditions for migrants and diasporas to fully contribute to sustainable development in all countries. The newly created State Department of Diaspora Affairs within our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, formed in the year 2020, addresses issues that concern Kenya's diaspora community who form an integral part of the Kenyan economy and social fabric. Similarly, the State Department of Investment Promotion, which I represent today, uh, mandated to coordinate uh, promotion of domestic and foreign direct private sector investments into the country uh, through attraction, facilitation, and enabling with the goal of making Kenya a preferred investment destination and a good home for the remittances from our diaspora. The Kenya Kwanzaa government uh, recognized that the Kenya diaspora will contribute significantly to the achievement of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, otherwise referred to as BETA. Notably, the Central Bank of Kenya, as perhaps you already had in your previous engagements, reports that diaspora remittances grew 8.4% in 2022 to become Kenya's second highest exchange earner. Uh, of at US dollar 4.027 billion after exports, which are generally at US dollars 5.77 billion. The State Department of Investment Promotion has therefore been tasked under the medium term plan to mobilize and convert at least 50% of diaspora remittances into investment flows. This, this task will require developing and implementing a diaspora investment promotion strategy and investments instruments to channel remittances to investment. And to this regard, a technical working group comprised of both uh, uh, private and public uh, holders, stakeholders has already uh, embarked on this task. The government of Kenya, therefore, intends to engage the Kenyan diaspora in a more constructive and productive manner 
to unlock and unleash their full potential. Having a look again into the Kenyan's remittance ecosystem, Kenya contributes significantly to the remittance ecosystem worldwide. Our country has one of the most competitive remittance markets due to the prevalence of the innovation and digital mechanisms. This is key if we are to maximize these funds amongst the most vulnerable recipients, including people in faraway, marginalized communities of our continent. Indeed, Kenya has been the frontier of digital payments for a long time. Mobile payments have been widespread for more than a decade in Africa, and in particular, and, and in, particular in Kenya, where the world's first successful mobile money system called M-Pesa was launched in 2007. By 2020, M-Pesa had become the largest mobile uh, money network in the world. It solved one of the biggest challenges in the mobile market sector, mobile secure ubiquitous low-cost payments. M-Pesa currently generates annual revenues of about US dollars 1.3 billion, and through the network, over 360 billion inflows uh, pass on an annual basis, and has an open application programming interface where over 6,000 60,000 developers are already plugged in. We believe this forum is a space that, only, that not only for valuable discussion and one-to-one -one conver conversations among participants, but also a place to strengthen stakeholder commitment to work together to devise solutions to global problems, as already also been emphasized by Honorable Christina here earlier on. Lastly, as we get to the sunset of this year's summit, I hope these three days have provided an excellent opportunity to advance further into the actionable roadmaps, bringing us closer to enable the 2030 SDG agenda.